Hey there friends, what are some things to keep in mind as you want to transition into becoming an independent group leader? Well, the number one thing is if you're an early career researcher that wants to establish him or herself as an independent researcher and then group leader, you have got to be known for something. This can be a topic, it can be an organism or an organism group, or it can be a method, an approach or a statistical technique. But when people in your field hear about that, they need to be thinking of you. This means the strategy that's really re rewarded early on is if you specialize on this particular theme, because then people will more and more identify you with that theme. Because if you specialize in a particular theme, then you will receive invitations to conferences to talk about this particular topic or to seminars, you might be asked to contribute to joint proposals, or you might be invited to write a paper for a special issue. So there are real rewards um, to being specialized in the very beginning. You also will have an advantage in terms of writing papers because the reviewers will typically give you, if they associate your name with this particular theme, a certain level of advanced trust. And of course, there are also real advantages to specializing because as you focus more and more on a particular topic, you will be able to know more and you will, as a consequence, also be able to ask better questions. However, as you specialize, <laughs> I think it is also important to still retain a certain readiness to also engage with other topics and to sort of low level um, read more broadly than just your specialty because this will increase your ability to collaborate with others enormously. Now once you have established your own group somewhere then of course if this is your interest you can also become broader again and you know, work on um, similar topics that are related to your main theme or take in completely different topics in your portfolio. But as I have explained, there are real disincentives to becoming too broad very early on, because then this mm, identifying you with a particular theme does not happen, right? because you're working on too many different topics. The second point is about your PI. How you choose your PI for your PhD or your postdoc, how you communicate with them and also what is their personality. So for example, does that PI allow you to, to take a certain topic with you as you leave the lab? Now this hasn't been an issue in my lab for example, but I know cases where this has been problematic for, for a number of reasons and I think the way to start that is to begin a conversation with your PI about what aspects of the work they're doing in this particular lab. Can they take along and to found their own group? There are many aspects that play into this here. For example, has that topic been brought to the lab by you? Or has the topic, for example, been the idea of your PI? That may very well affect the readiness of your PI or the willingness of your PI to take that topic with you if it, you brought it to the lab in the first place, for example rather than vice versa. Also, how different is what you're planning to do in your new independent group from the research line in the host lab? Is it just related or is it basically exactly the same? And it will of course depend on the personality of your PI. Will the PI view you as a future potential collaborator or will they view you as a competitor? And so that last point also brings up, of course, the importance of choosing the right PI for, for you, uh, for your PhD or your postdoc. Is this a more collaborative person or will this be a person that will be more interested in preserving their territory? This may, of course, be a little bit difficult to judge, but I think if you do your background research, you can find out a fair amount about that attitude. So I think those are the main two points. It's what you do and how you do it, and then also how you communicate and negotiate and pick your PI. Those are the two more important aspects in your transition to an independent group leader. Now there's very many ways how you can become independent and that will depend on your particular situation. But I hope these general points have been helpful to you in establishing your independent group. And so please also let me know in the comments if you have additional points to add or what your experience was with establishing an independent group. And with that, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.